Hey everybody, in today's video we are going to make some small flower pots using the coil building technique. Before we get started though, I'd encourage you to pause and check out some of the Jomon pottery that I'm showing you here. These are Japanese coiled pots from around 14,000 BC. They're some of the oldest pots in existence and they are stunning. Jomon means rope patterned in Japanese. To start this project, we're going to roll a series of coils. These coils are going to be somewhat thinner than I normally do because the coils will be visible in the finished pot. Additionally, this object is going to be relatively small, and so we aren't interested in getting a lot of height out of each coil. If your coil becomes too long for you to roll, simply tear it in half or cut it in half and roll each section. If you have enough of these, you may want to wrap them up. For many coil projects, if the clay is wet enough, I will not score and slip all the seams. In this instance though, I am going to do so because I will not be doing the consolidation or smoothing out that I normally would in the wall. The coils will be visible in the final surface, so a little bit of pressure will make a good connection. I've also found that if I roll a spiraled base, I'm more likely to get a crack in the bottom. But because this one is a flower pot, I've left a hole in the bottom, and even if a crack does form where the seams are, it won't matter because I want water to drain anyways. Inspired by some of the Jomon pots that I looked at, my coils are going to run vertically on the sides of these pieces rather than being coiled around horizontally. In this way, the coils become a design element as well as the structure. At this point I have a good set of foundational coils around the perimeter of the flower pot. I'll adjust them a little bit to make sure that the form is keeping round. At this stage I'm not worried too much about the seams. They're really goopy and wet. The clay is very wet and I will clean those up a little bit later on after the whole thing has a chance to dry a little bit. And next I will start adding some spiral coils for design elements. For now I'm creating all the spirals and placing them on the piece to get proper spacing and I'll attach them once I have everything situated and adjusted.
By gently applying a little bit of pressure on the inside and outsides of each coil, I can get the seams to become a little bit tighter without losing the individual coils in the process. This last coil on the top will tie together all the other components and add a little bit of strength during the shrinking and firing process. With the bulk of the form completed, at this stage I'm looking for holes in the side that I can plug with a small ball of clay. There may be forms or other shapes that you're interested in making where having holes in the sides would be ideal. And I'd encourage you to explore some of the flower bricks or vases that Victoria Kristen makes, where she is creating um, coiled areas to hold the flowers in place. I'll add a few decorative elements to the top, and then we'll move on to making the base of this flower pot. When making the base of the flower pot, we're going to do a hybrid of techniques here where we're starting out with a pinched or paddled flat slab and then we'll build coils up around the edges. I'm doing this so that I don't wind up with any cracks or areas where water might leak through the bottom. I still want the slab to look coiled though, so I'm going to treat the edges after I cut it so that they are rounded and will appear to be a slab from the side. While rolling this particular coil, I got some thin areas, and so you can see I'm bringing my hands back together towards the middle to get that coil to become thicker in those spots. Again, because this tray needs to be watertight, it's crucial that I don't have any gaps between my coils. So I'm squeezing the coils and other bits of clay to close up those seams. Additionally, I'm adding small balls of clay where I have large voids. When the forming is finished, make sure that you put your flower pot in its tray to make sure that you have a good fit and you can make any last minute adjustments. When you're ready to let it dry, remove it from the tray and let them stiffen up separately, going over the surface one last time to clear up any smudges or goopy clay. Dry this item slowly under a pillowcase or loosely covered with plastic. I can't wait to see what you come up with using this technique.
Thanks for watching.